Green. What's going on guys, Logan JYA here coming at you with another deck profile on Zeroni's undefeated 5-0 Burning Abyss list from the GG for free this week. Very hyped and excited to see such a classic list performing so well. Let's see how these demons deal with Dragon Links while we hop into this replay before we get into the profile. So, we've got Zeroni on the bottom playing the Burning Abyss facing off against Dragon Link on the top. Decent enough opening. You see, I don't. I feel like I don't have to explain this too much because most of us are probably familiar with the new Dragon Link combos. Uh, going into the spheres relatively early, but it's not that big of a deal. He's netting the draws. He's getting the LP. He's summoning the Dragon Maid to get the search for the tidying. An interesting new tech card that we're seeing more and more often in Dragon Link lists nowadays. Uh, following that up with the Chaos Dragon Levy in here, getting a card out of hand. Uh, going into the Romulus, grabbing the Ravine. Apparently, they're not playing the uh, Sphere, not the Spheres, the Spear anymore. Uh, the Booty Sector launches drop, summon the Tracer, bring out the other rocket, go for the Boral, and ending on a relatively threatening board. Uh, three piece Apo with a Boral and a Spheres. It's going to be a little too much for Zeroni. So, game two, Zeroni's going to start us off here. He's got a hand full of Demons featuring a Droll and Lockbird, a card that's very strong in the matchup. I remember we were laughing about this, ending on Beatrice Fat Pass, unironically going Neg 2, and we're like, oh man, there's no way this man's going to stop it. But the Droll makes him pass turn! Crazy! And this is going to be the, the nail that seals the coffin, because our man's about to a spiral out of control with the advantage for the burning abysses so we see him make the zeus got a beatrice zeus online uh, very very strong and uh, we see don kind of starting to play thinking about how he can play around it going choosing to go for the spheres which will leave him with a board presence uh, the beatrice is going off uh, with the forfa um and everything went away for a second there very interesting now we see the Chaos Dragon Levy in here get dropped. Uh, the Droplets comes down at a pretty opportune time. And uh, yeah, the Spheres comes down. The Zeus is relieved of its duties. And yeah. And then we see a Bar Bar for 900. Pretty strong. Uh, going in for that damage. And this is just going to be where the Floaters come in clutch, right? So uh, Don, Don scoops it up that game. And now we proceed into game three. A very strong hand for this matchup. Ash and Droll, two demons and a pot of desires, forces him to pass turn. Droll is easily one of the greatest hand traps of the current format. We see an Ash dropped on his pot of desires, but still got live demons. Choosing to Gamma a demon is definitely an interesting choice, but it does force him to just pass on a Livic. We're still backed up with that one Ash Blossom, though. Let's find out if it's going to be enough. Oh, that's right. He chooses to go for the conservative play, summoning the Kwaki Meru Dragon, which prevents the special summons of light and dark monsters. Uh, proceeding to the end phase, revealing a dragon. We see a normal summon of the Bar Bar, and uh, just proceeds to pass turn after that gets bounced back. And uh, Don proceeds just to apply that slight amount of pressure. He's also feeling the, uh, the sting of his own dragon here. Now we have a Droplets drop to... Uh, Negate the dragon, summon the Dante, go in for that damage, and drop the Zeus. The Zeus is going to be the real game ender here, right? It's a two-piece Zeus, but it is more than enough. We're going to find out here together. He does let him get into the spheres, but does it even matter? Because we're seeing a bunch of advantage generated, and he chose to hold off on the summon of his Beatrice till later in the play, which we see come up extremely relevantly now, and another Zeus is dropped. Uh, Chaos Dragon Levianir comes down to blow up the board and, uh, recycle it with a safert, of course. Ash on the ravine, though, is enough to seal the deal. He knew he had demons in hand and the man was at 900 life points. That's GG. Definitely a cool game to watch. Now let's get into the deck profile. All right, what's going on, guys? Logan JYA here with Zeroni, who ended up going undefeated at this week's GG for free with Burning Abyss. I feel like we've been blessed to have two diverse, interesting decks back-to-back uh, -back for the past two weeks. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get into this uh, Burning Abyss deck profile, so be sure to stick around and hear some of these explanations for these particular card choices. Uh, before we get started, Zeroni, do you have any shout-outs you'd like to get, bro? Uh, yeah, just my Yu-Gi-Oh buddies, uh, Samir, Rakan, Shoujo, uh, Rob, not the stream Rob, but he's cool too, and uh, Aaron. Cool. Uh, and the people at the Black Rose Gaming uh, Discord server for helping me with my list. Excellent stuff. Now, let's get into the profile. 
Starting things off, we've got the Triple Ash Blossom and Joy Spring, the one Noah Green in Barbar We Trust, Triple Seer, Triple Farfa, Triple Ghost Bell of Haunted Mansion, uh, Triple Graph, of course, uh, Double Libic, Triple Skarm, and then uh, Triple Skullmeister, and of course, Triple Tour Guide. Bringing this deck really back to its roots with the Triple, 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 and Triple. It's crazy to see this again. Haven't seen it since a, a long time ago. Um, so what do you, what, for, for the monster lineup, we see nine hand traps here, very strong ones, two that hit the grave, one that hits everything in the form of Ash Blossom. Which was the most impactful hand trap that you chose to play, and would you consider making any changes to your lineup? Um, I'd have to say that it would probably be the Ash Blossom, or the, the Skullmeister, just because, you know, Ash hits everything, and Skullmeister hits pretty much all of the meta. Like, it really came in clutch in my uh, Eldritch matchup. Bell, Bell was pretty good for the uh, whole tournament, except for my Dragon Link matchup, where it just sat in my hand. But other than that, yeah, I would highly recommend these nine hand traps. Got it. Makes enough sense to me. Let's slide into the spells. We got one call by the grave, triple forbidden droplets, and then triple pot of desires. Nice and concise. Now I gotta ask you, bro. Everything here makes sense. Uh, how how good was pot of desires? Are you happy that you played this one? Would you have rather played a different pot? Um, did it ever hurt you with the banish? How was desires? Uh, pot of desires worked amazingly for this format. I mean, tournament. Sorry. Uh, you know. Everything's a three of. I never get punished for the uh, banish. It's a plus one. I mean, I don't have to explain why desires is good. It's, you know, Absolutely. it's desires. Absolutely. Uh, and, yeah. And then I have to ask you, you're not playing Foolish Burial. Is there any reason for that? Um, I'm a glue eater. <laughs> uh, I can't give you a good reason. Hey, fair enough. Maybe we'll see an iteration 2.0. And now, wrapping things up with the deck, we got trap cards. I don't think we got to spend any time explaining this. We got six trap cards, some of the strongest in the game. Triple Psalm Strike, Triple Torrential Tribute. Torrential barely hurts your own deck because everything floats. And then Solemn Strike hits every matchup. It's 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 one of the best cards in, of the current format, hands down. Is there anything that you want to say about the traps? Uh, I wish I could fit in Fire Lake. <laughs> right? Exactly. Dude, Pop 3. Pop 3 is the dream. Uh, R.I.P. Fire Lake. Someday you'll be back. Someday. Now let's slide into that side deck. We've got... Oh, excuse me. We're, we got the uh, the triple of the Ally Justice Cycle Reader, which is a double DD Crow. Uh, triple Lancia. Triple Droll and Lockbird to really lock down those uh, Drytrons. The one Ariel, which we're definitely going to talk about. Triple Cosmic Cyclone, one Harpy's Feather Duster, and then one Mischief of the Gnomes, which is definitely cheeky. Um, first and foremost, tell me a little bit about the uh, the Ariel and the Mischief of the Gnomes. What are those doing here? Okay, so the Mischief of the Gnomes is the actually good idea uh, card that I put in. Uh, I saw it from the LCS 10 list and uh, Kenny D's PPG list. Um, it's a uh, basically to screw over Virtual World, because it just kills that deck. Um, and you can send it off of Beatrice to get its effect. Right. Uh, it's pretty much a turn skip. Now, for the Aerial, don't play Aerial. Just play Crescendo. It came up, but you'd much rather just search the um, Cycle Reader with... Uh, Crescendo. Interesting. But, uh, I just put in the aerial because I was like, Ooh, me, me no like not summoning uh, my stuff off Seer when the Beatrice dies. <laughs> but if I resolve Cycle Reader against uh, Drytron, Beatrice won't be dying, so that's pointless. Very but, true, very uh, fair. That's something I never really thought about or heard of, is searching it off of Crescendo. That might just be me being out of touch, but that's that's awesome. It's a really cool idea. Let's slide into the extra deck. Uh, bring this joint to a close. We've got the one Dante Pilgrim of the Burning Abyss Fusion Monster, one Beatrice Lady of the Eternal, triple Dante, double uh, Zeus, one Downard Magician, one Fortune Tune, one Axis Code Talker, one Cherubini Weenie, 
one IP Mascarina, one Nightmare Phoenix, one Unicorn, and one Topologic Zoroboros. So I've got a few questions for you, but let's start off with the interesting choice. This may have been in some other list, and I'm just out of touch once again. But we see a number 49 Fortune Tune here. Uh, can you explain this choice a little bit for me? It makes Zeus. All right, I that, guess that, that's, that's it. <laughs> Uh, it, it's basically the uh, the Lyrilesque card from uh, Drytron. The Dante Pilgrim. I know we, you play this to summon off Beatrice if Beatrice were to be destroyed by an opponent's card. Did you ever get the chance to summon it? Uh, yeah. Um, Gay Dante definitely came up. Uh, you know, he's nice and fabulous and all that. Quite fabulous. Um... And besides that and the extra, I don't think there's any other questions that I have for you. Anything that you want to highlight before we wrap this up? Uh, don't play Ariel. Play Crescendo. Okay. <laughs> you heard it here first, guys. Don't play Ariel. Play Crescendo. But hey, I still think it was a cool, interesting choice. Um, all right, come on. We got to talk about that one thing that happened, though, where you summoned Ariel and sent it off Zeus to banish Golden Lord and Eldritch Traps. That was pretty nice. Yeah, I, I opened it in my hand, and I, I can't do anything with this. It's a brick. But just like Drake and, and Josh then... says, you found a way. <laughs> now, that's all I got for you guys today. Thank you so much to Zeroni. Congratulations on your fir first place win. And if you guys want to participate in the GG for free uh, for yourself, be sure to hit the first link in the description down below to join the Twitch stream and stay up to date with everything that we got going on. So um, that's that's it. Thank you very much. Uh, Logan JYA signing off. Have a great day.